Good morning, Afton. How is everybody today? I say morning because of the time I recorded, and I just got used to saying that last year. So, uh, welcome. Again, I'll apologize if this was not up yesterday. I had to analyze the data from what I saw and go over a few things. So, there were some things that I saw in terms of some of you guys had to try some problems twice. I don't know if that was because... Again, you were having trouble just typing it into Math Excel. I mean, there's a number of variables I can see with that. There was one big topic that I saw, so I will kind of slow down on that one. I will kind of make some make some time and make some extra effort on that one. But I did want to go ahead. I kind of want to just fly through this lesson here, kind of go over these right here. So with that in mind, I want to kind of just talk about when I'm teaching, what my expectations are for you, and everything else. So one, if you were in the classroom, you would be taking notes. This is an extension of the classroom. You should still be taking notes. You should be making sure that you, whenever you sit down to take these videos, you have pencil and paper or pen or whatever um, ready to go with taking these notes. So that's the first thing I wanted to say is that if you think, oh, I'm just gonna watch this video while I'm also watching Netflix, no. That's a horrible idea. You should be focused on these videos. And that goes not just for my class, I would say any class. Make sure that again, you are just like you were in the classroom, focus on this, okay? If you're watching this on your Chromebook, put your phone in the other room. If you're on your phone right now watching this, minimize all the other apps. Don't be trying to do multiple things at the same time, okay? Focus on this the same way that I would say you should be focusing in the classroom. So that's the first thing that I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of. Now, like I said, we're gonna be going kind of fast. You might realize that, hey, like, oh man, Mr. Keith, can you slow down? Realize, I can't, but it's a video. Hit pause, take a moment, pause it, if you need to catch up, if I'm going too fast for you. So I'm gonna point out some things to you that kinda, of, again, maybe just at this level of math, you didn't think like, oh, hey, like, yeah, I guess that's a thing, like you could do that. Um, and everything there. So I want you guys to kind of just be aware of that as a whole. This is how, like I said, I want to analyze the data just to kind of see where we're at, see where some people are. I can tell you right now, some of you guys still didn't get that assignment done and that's disheartening. Some of you guys still haven't even signed up for Math Excel, and that is disheartening. So make sure that you're taking care of your business. Make sure that you are doing what you need to do. I currently already have the assignment up uh, at the time of me making this video. But again, I would still suggest at least watching this video, even if you go, Mr. Keith, I feel really confident because there are some things that were not on that first assignment that will be in here. So we're gonna start off saying, solving single variable linear equations. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, that's a lot of mumbo jumbo. You're right. Um, it's, it's a lot if you don't speak math, it's really easy what we're actually talking about. I want to go ahead and start off with an easy problem for us here. So we have five times the quantity three X plus five minus three times the quantity two X minus nine equals two X plus 10 minus four. Here's what I want to say. One, I realize I kind of looks like I wrote up on a hill, but this is an easy problem. If you're looking at that going, that's, that's hard, Mr. Keith. We have an issue. Now, with that in mind, I'm not saying this doesn't take some time Realize that there is a difference between difficult and time consuming. Those two things are not synonyms. Sometimes students think that those two things are synonyms. They're not. Just because that something takes a long time doesn't mean that it's difficult. That's what I want you guys to understand. Okay? Anyone I was like, given enough time, can move a mile. Okay, whether you're walking or running, again, that's what makes it difficult. What you're doing. How you are doing it makes it difficult, but what you're doing is not difficult. So right here, that's what I want you guys to understand is when looking at this, again, we're distributing, we're combining like terms, we're doing lots of things here. Now, with that, I want you guys to understand that in this class, we're up at this level, we're up at the college algebra level. When it's something that's simple like this, I'm not gonna expect every single little detail in all of that. And that's what I want you guys to understand is that when we're looking at this stuff, I'm not gonna say like, okay, cool. I wanna see 
like every single step spelled out. No, I hope that you can look at this and kind of combine the steps. Now, realize that when it comes to partial credit, the less work you show, if something goes wrong along the way, the less credit I can give you. So it's kind of a slippery slope there where you can write less, but then if something is wrong, you're gonna receive less points in terms of the grade. So again, you have to make sure that you kind of do some evaluation saying, well, maybe I should write a little bit more and maybe you'll catch a mistake along the way. Right here, I distribute 15X plus 20. That's a minus three, so I can distribute that as a negative three to write minus 6X plus 27. And then I can combine some like terms over there and get 2X plus six. Now again, from here, combine some like terms, move some stuff around. So we're gonna go ahead and end up with 9x plus 47, sorry. Equals that 2x plus six. So subtract the 2x, uh, subtract the 42, we end up with 7x equals negative 41. Now again, notice I didn't write out minus 2x, minus 2x, minus 47 minus 47. Write that if you need to. That is the important part here. Okay, just because you might go, well, Mr. Keith didn't write it, so I shouldn't write it. No, if it helps you, write it. Write it. That's the thing you need to understand, is that just because you might go, well, oh, Mr. Keith, you didn't, you skipped this step. If you need that step, do it. That goes for everything we do in this class, everything. If it helps you, do it. I'm not gonna be upset because, ah, oh, look at this, they showed me all their work. Uh, no, never gonna be the case. Now, there will be something that if you do, I'm gonna get upset with you. So, next step is divide by seven. So we end up with x equals negative 41 over seven. That is the answer. This right here, negative 41 over seven is the answer. If you tell me that this is negative 5.8, you are wrong and will lose points. These two things are not equivalent. They're close, but they're not the same thing. Now you might say, oh, well, I, I should have, you're right, Mr. Heath, you should have rounded and said negative 5.9, still wrong. This is the exact answer. In this class, we only deal with exact answers. If you wanted to give me the exact answer, I don't even know that one off the top of my head. I need a calculator. I have to grab a calculator here to help me with this. I was like, I need to take that 41 divided by seven. And that would be the negative 5.857142 repeating. That is the correct answer if you want to give me a decimal. Who the heck wants to write that? That is nonsense. And that's what I want you guys to understand is that I'm not going to say you can't give me decimals. I'm going to say you need to give me exact answers. If that's not the answer you give me, then it's wrong. Why do this when it's easy to write a fraction? Some of you guys have fraction phobia. I don't know why. Get that out of your head. Be done with that idea. You need to make sure that you understand fractions are a hundred times better than decimals. Okay, if we live in a perfect world where everything was over 10, sure, decimals are great. I was like, or over two or over five. But if it's not over two, five, or ten, decimals suck. So that's what I want you guys to understand is that fractions are better. All right. Now, with that, here's the thing. So there's going to be times I'm going to say, hey, I want you to try this real quick on your own. Because that's what we would do in class is I would say, hey, go ahead and try this problem. And then I kind of walk around the room. 
saying the same thing, except I'm not going to stop. I want you to try this problem on your own. It is x minus 4 in parentheses, x plus 3 in parentheses, equals x plus 2 in parentheses, x plus 5 in parentheses. Pause, write now, and go ahead and try that problem on your own. Now, let's go ahead and let's take a look at this. I need to FOIL here. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to FOIL this out. Get x squared minus x minus 12 equals x squared plus 7x plus 10. Now, we said these are single variable linear equations. When you have an x squared, this is now considered a quadratic. But this is what we call a pseudo quadratic. Because if I look closely and I go, oh, well, I got x plus 2 over here, I got x plus 2 over here. If I subtract, I said x plus 2. Sorry. I have x squared over here, I have x squared over here. If I subtract x squared from both sides, they just cancel out. And I'm left with negative x minus 12 equals 7x plus 10. Not a difficult problem. Add the 2, subtract the 10, negative 22 equals... 8x divided by 8, and we get x equals. Now that can reduce. Yes, we do need to reduce our fractions. Oh no, what a terrible thing. Mr. Keith is saying you should know how to reduce some fractions. We get negative 11 over 22. Because if I have 22 over 8, divide both by 2. So that's the thing, because I want you guys to understand is that none of these are going to be, if you have an x squared, in your problem at the end, you messed up somewhere up here because all of these are single variable linear equations. All right, moving on. So two different problems, but the exact same idea. So right here, this is what we have. These are called proportions. Anytime you have a fraction equal to a fraction, that means that they are proportions because they are proportional. So very simple. Again, I'd be asking you guys right now, what can we do anytime we have a fraction equal to a fraction? If you're saying cross multiply, fantastic. However, remember, I can't hear you. It's a video. So cross multiply, 7x equals 25, divide by 7, and we get, oh, hey, look, x equals 25 over 7. Why would you want to type that into your calculator? It doesn't make sense to me. So over here, it's the same thing. But notice I have something more complex than just a variable or a number there. So then I need to make sure that I put these in parentheses and distribute that 7 and 2 accordingly. So I'll end up with 7x minus 28 equals 2x plus 6. Now again, if you need to write the set, 7 parenthesis x minus 4 equals 2 parenthesis x plus 3. If you need to write that step, go ahead and write that step. Again, never going to be upset. But it's like, I don't have to see that. I trust that you guys can distribute in your head. So subtract the 2x, add the 28. We end up with 5x equals 34. Divide by 5, and we get x equals, again, you can leave it as 34 over 5. You can leave it as 34 over 5, but this is one of the times where I would say, hey, you know what? This ends up being a 6.8. It's an okay-looking decimal. That's an okay-looking decimal. If you gave me 6.8 as an answer, that is acceptable because that is exact. These two things are exactly the same. But again, why take the extra step when it's already a fraction? Why not just leave it as that 34 over 5? Makes life easier for everybody. All right, now, I want to show these two problems side by side. Because students looking back go, all right, 3x plus 5 equals 7. They go, easy. And they go, what the hell did you give us, Mr. Keith? Ax plus b equals 2. There's no numbers. What do you expect us to do? Well, in both these problems, I'm asking you to solve for x. Okay, you can write that up here. Solve for x, I'm saying it, it will be on the next slide. Solve for x. So, with that in mind, 
want us to look at this. What would I do if I was trying to get x by itself? You're right, I would subtract 5. Now, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to do something kind of crazy. I'm not actually going to subtract those. I'm just going to write them next to each other. 3x equals 7 minus 5. Easy peasy. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide by 3. Again, I'm not going to actually do the math here. I'm just going to go ahead and say x equals 7 minus 5 over 3. Now, sure, yes, we can do that math and end up saying x equals 2 thirds. I'm not saying that that's not what I would want if this was the problem I gave you. But what I'm saying is if I understand that problem over there, if I look at this and I go, I know how to do everything that you just said, Mr. Keith, great. Then let's talk about this problem. I'm trying to get x by itself. Well, what did I do over here to get x by itself? I subtracted the 5. Well, what should I do to get x by itself over here? I should go ahead and subtract b from both sides. That minus sign looks weird, sorry. So that way I get ax equals, and again, I can't do that math. They're two different, they're two different variables, but I can go ahead and write c minus b. That's not a problem. Then how do I finish up getting, getting rid of that a to get the x by itself? Well, I just divide by a. I get x equals c minus b over a. They're the same problem, just with different numbers. And by numbers, a, b, and c are numbers. Now, there is something I'll point out about these problems. When you see these problems, you'll usually see some disclaimer like this right here. You'll see after the problem, you'll see A does not equal zero. You'll see something written like that after the problem. The reason that you see something like that written after the problem is strictly because we have something undefined if we didn't say it up here. This is just kind of like that, like, this is just kind of the, uh, the, the FBI warning at the beginning of a video where they're like, hey, like piracy is a crime, like don't steal this video or whatever. Um, that's all this is, it's just a disclaimer. It's just saying like, hey, like A, a could never be zero. That's the only reason that they write that. Is it's, it's the math equivalent of saying like, hey, don't, like, don't text and drive. All right, so I want you guys to go ahead and solve this problem. So again, take a moment, pause this video, and then go ahead and try to solve this video. It is Q, parenthesis, Rx, plus S, close parenthesis, equals V. So again, try that video on your own. Disclaimer, they would go ahead and they would tell us in this problem as a disclaimer that Q cannot equal zero, and they would tell us that R cannot equal zero. But again, those are strictly disclaimers for this problem. Okay, now that you've paused this video, I want you to go ahead and let's look at this together. So, same, I got, a, I got something outside parentheses. I can distribute that. So I end up with QRX plus QS equals V. Now, again, you might look at this and go, okay, well, does that mean I need to subtract Q and subtract S? No, because when you subtract 10, realize what you're subtracting is you're subtracting two times five. This is just some product. Well, I can subtract a product. I can go ahead and I can simply say, subtract QS from both sides. So that way we have QRX equals V minus QS. And now I need to get X by itself. Again, I have two things that I'm multiplying it with. I could divide those separately, or I can just go ahead and say, hey, I'll divide by QR at the same time. So that way those just cancel each other out. And we get X equals V minus QS over QR. Now, Sometimes students are tempted, they see, oh, oh, we have a Q on top of bottom, so that we can cancel out. Well, I would need that Q in both of these. 
So the answer is no, you cannot cancel out the Q's because it's not in both of those terms. But that right there would just be a answer. Now, I bring this up because this is kind of the, the bare bones idea. There are going to be certain times where we're looking at some stuff and we want to look at it abstractly. We don't necessarily want to look at something with numbers. We want to look at it abstractly. So we need to understand that when we say Q, R, S, V, those are just some numbers. We just happen to not know those numbers. And that's fine. That's why algebra is, is this universal idea. Because if we can do it here and it makes sense, then we can do it with anything and we know that we're going to get the right answer. All right, a few more things that I want to talk about here uh, and just make sure that we kind of have a baseline down for everything. So right here we have a, we have a bunch of fractions. We have a bunch of fractions added together. In this case, I'm going to tell you the easiest thing to do is get rid of the fractions. As much as I love fractions, as, as great as they are, and as better than decimals as they are, I will be the first to tell you right away that, you know what, I was like, doing a problem with fractions in it is not fun. It's not fun, it sucks, and I don't, I don't want to do it, so why do you guys want to do it? So, with that in mind, I want to get rid of those fractions. The easiest way to get rid of those fractions is to get a common denominator with everything. So, if I get this common denominator with everything, I can go ahead and I can say, okay, well, I got a three and a five. Okay, well, common denominator would be 15, but I, I can't turn a 10 into a 15. Okay, but I can turn 10 to a 30. I can turn a three into a 30 and a five into 30. So you might have to think about what a good common denominator is. Hopefully you can kind of see some of those a little bit easier. So if we know 30, what I always like to do is I always just like to do this right here and just rewrite all those fractions with the denominator of 30. Because then I just need to ask myself, okay, how do I turn a three into a 30? And I just go, oh, times 10. Now you have to remember that a fraction is a unit, so whatever I do to the bottom of the fraction, I just have to do the same to the top, and now I just get 10x. Turn a five into a 30 by times six, so I get a six right here, and then times three to the top and bottom, and we get 27. Now here's where the magic happens. Here's where it's magic. Since all these denominators are the same, I can cancel them out. Mathematically, what I'm doing is I'm multiplying the entire equation by 30. But all that really does is that just gets rid of these denominators. This is the thing that's the easiest way to do this. There's other ways to do it. And if you think you have another method, again, I'm never gonna be upset if you know a different method and you know it works. That's the big thing, is you have to know it works. Don't just automatically say, oh, well, I think this works, and then do it. No, no, no. If you're not sure if it works 100% of the time, I was like, then, I was like, talk to me. Ask me, okay? Ask me if it works 100% of the time. I can tell you. All right? That's the biggest thing. Because I have students who are like, oh, well, this works 80% of the time. Would you want a car that works 80% of the time? I know some of you guys have a car that works 80% of the time. But... Nobody wants that. So why would I want a method for solving that only works 80% of the time? That's the important thing. But now that you have that, it's 10x plus 6 equals 27 subtracted by, and we get x equals 21 over 10. Again, if you gave me 2.1, I would say that's acceptable, but I think that fraction is a little bit better. I know that's why some of you guys like decimals because it's easier to set decimals into your calculators. Guess what? You shouldn't need a calculator for like anything this chapter. When I make the numbers insane, sure, grab a calculator, but none of the numbers are gonna get crazy. All right, so I wanna, we got two more problems. I wanna talk about this one, um, and then again, I'll, I'll say pause and, and you guys can try it. So sometimes you'll see something like this right here, where you, you'll see this, uh, this 2 thirds x. And that's a common way that we write these a lot of the times because sometimes we want that fraction there. Anytime I have a variable next to, I'm saying multiply this guy times this fraction here. So what that means is that this is the same as just simply saying 2x over 3. I bring that up because I can tell you some of your problems on tonight's assignment look like this right here. 
So you just want to go ahead, you can just move that up to the top of the fraction. It has to go to the top. You can't pick and choose which one it goes to. Uh, but this is these two things are 100% equivalent. Minus 5 over 6 equals 1. So now go ahead and pause. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this problem here. A good common denominator uh, happens to be 24. If you said 48, that's fine. You just have slightly bigger numbers than you're going to see here. It just has to be a common denominator. It doesn't have to be the best common denominator. That's the other thing I try to stress to students, is that if you go, well, I use this number, Mr. Keith. Cool, like as long as it works, as long as you get the right answer, I don't care what denominator you pick. So as I said, 24. So if I, I'll multiply top and bottom here by eight. So again, this is not, there's no plus sign, there's no distributing, but I do have to multiply the two and the eight to get 16x. And then over here, that's going to be multiply top and bottom by four. So I end up with 20, and then multiply top and bottom by three, and we end up with three over 24. Now, when you cancel out these denominators, when you cancel out these denominators, I want to make sure you guys know this right here. See, there's a minus sign. Make sure you don't lose that minus sign. Make sure that that 20 is a minus right there. So 16x minus 20 equals 3. Add, divide. We end up with x equals 23 over 16. Double check if it can reduce. Oh, it can't. So that's my answer. This is not a horrible decimal, but I, I, it's still four decimal places. I, again, I wouldn't want to write four decimal places, so why would you guys? All right, one last problem, and then that will be it for the day. Like I said, uh, let's see, where are we closing on here? All right, yeah, 30 minutes. That's about what I was shooting for here. I know there will be pauses and things like that. but So uh, right here. So looking at this problem, notice now the x is in the denominator. Hmm. Well, there's still fractions. So with that, I still need a good common denominator. The other reason I want to give you this problem is because notice that the 2 is a 2. It's not a fraction. When I say I need a good common denominator, I need that for every single term in this problem. So I need to go ahead and I need to turn that 2 into a fraction by putting it over 1. So I don't really have to worry about it, but I do have to make sure that I get that as a good common denominator. So that's the question I ask you now. Think about this. What would a good common denominator be with a 5 and an x? Hmm. No, try again. Well, I didn't hear you. OK, yeah, 5x. Think about it. If I have 1 over 2 plus 1 over 23, and I want to know what a good common denominator is, for these two things, I just multiply those two things together, right? So if that's my thought, hey, I can just multiply the two numbers together to get a common denominator, I can just multiply these numbers together. X is still some number, we just don't know what it is. So a good common denominator here is simply 5x. How about? So I just have to ask myself the question, how do I turn an x into a 5x? Well, by multiplying by 5. So that's a 5 right there. How do I turn a 5 into an x? Well, by multiplying by x. So you could write the 1x. You never have to write a 1x. And then how do I turn a 1 into a 5x? Well, i got to multiply by 5x here. So 2 times 5x gives me. And now that all of those are the same, I can just cancel those out. That's it. That's how we do it. So right here, with that in mind, we can go ahead and say 5 plus x equals 10x. Track the x, divide, we end up with x equals 5 over 9. Again, as a decimal, that's 0.5 repeating. If you give me anything other than 0.5 repeating, 
it's wrong, why would you want to write a repeating? I don't even know if Math Excel does repeating decimals. Now that I'm thinking about that in my head, I was like, and they won't accept, like I said, they won't accept 0.5 or 0.6. They won't accept either of those because they're not right. So. That's it. I'm going to double check that I didn't write anything else real quick. That is blank. All right. So that is it. Like I said, uh, right around 30 minutes. That's what I expect for these lessons here. Yes, I know. Like I said, I said pause and do this and all that. So maybe this took you about 40 minutes. But big thing, make sure the assignment is up on Math Excel. I can not remember the name exactly off the top of my head. I will try to, at the end of these videos, always say what assignment goes with it. Uh, if it's like, I think it's just solving something, solving linear, oh, just solving equations. I wasn't fancy with the title, sorry. So solving equations, the assignment goes with this on Math Excel. Make sure to do those problems. Um, and then hopefully you'll see this same outfit here in a little bit because I'm going to make another video today for tomorrow's stuff. So um, with that, I will go ahead and I will bid you adieu. Until next time, stay safe out there after.